When you, when you last saw us, the electric car was in dire straits as the hole saw failed to drill the hole for the coupler. What happened last time is I brought a brand new hole saw and the shaft had shattered in the chuck. Apparently it wasn't properly tempered. New hole saw, new shaft, we've got a hole. What this is is a very large hole to accommodate the shaft coupler between the transmission which is going to sit here and the motor which is going to sit here. Since I've seen you last, I took the plate we built, cut a second plate that the motor is going to mount to, lined them up so that they were right angled to each other, and then welded them together. This is a start to the support system for the motor. The motor sits here and weighs almost 180 pounds. Once I have this in the car, I'm going to add some struts to help support the motor once I know where I've got clearance. So the next step is to bolt the transmission up to the plate and figure out where the motor is going to land on the main plate. You can see how the shaft of the transmission is going to come out through the hole we drilled. The biggest problem we've got now is how to center the motor's shaft and line it up with the transmission shaft. This is very critical. Although that coupler allows for a degree or two of variation, the straighter it is, the better it's going to run, the quieter it's going to run, and the more efficiently it's going to run. So there are a couple of different ways to center that shaft. Uh, if you're making a flat plate, you can measure from the center of a bolt hole to the center of the shaft and then draw arcs from all the different holes and that will locate the center. This is most likely what a machinist would do. What I'm going to do is actually bring out that shaft, lay it down, transfer the measurements down onto the plate so I know where the center of that shaft is, and then because I know this plate is parallel with the transmission, I can draw the shaft on this plate and know the center line of my motor. In order to do that, I need something that slips onto the splined shaft on the transmission snugly. The fitting that you use for it, if you try it, does not fit snugly. It's supposed to have some play in it so that if a little bit of misalignment or a little bit of vibration doesn't get transmitted through the two. So I went through my junk pile and the closest thing I could find was a piece of copper tube with a fitting on the end that is a snug fit on the shaft. So what I can do, is snug that onto the shaft, and I'm going to slowly rotate the shaft because it isn't fitting quite straight. But as you rotate it, you can actually, sighting off the edge, see when it's perfectly centered. The other thing I could do if I wanted to be very precise is put a dial indicator on here and measure what's called the runout of the shaft, and that tells you how much out of round it is. Allows you to adjust it until you get it perfect. Given that the motor is going to have a fair amount of play once it's mounted, I'll be able to slide it back and forth a good eighth of an inch. I'm not worried about this being precise. So what I want to do now is take the edges of that tube down onto my plate. And all I need to do is put a square on it, make sure it's flat on the bottom, touching the edge of the tube, and then mark where the bottom corner hits. If I do that on both sides, hopefully at the same place, I will have the shadow of the tube dropped straight down onto the main plate. What I'm going to do is measure the width of the two marks I made with the square, bringing the shaft down, and it's basically 0.8 inches. So if I measure half of that, 0.4 inches, set my caliper to that, right about there, there. I can actually lock that in with the caliper and then use that spacing to mark the center. And just to be on the safe side, I'm going to mark it from both sides and make sure my line lands on the same place. Okay, what we're going to do now is try to fit the motor and line it up with the transmission. The first thing I'm going to do is place the motor on here with the motor shaft touching the shaft of the transmission. And then I'm going to mark where the front of the motor lands. Actually, I think I'll mark the front motor holes on the plate. And that will give me the closest I can fit the motor and the transmission without having to cut anything. So if we slide the motor back, what that means is once I put the couplers on, the transmission coupler and the motor coupler, 
I would put the spider in between. This is the spider that fits inside the couplers. But I would have to drill out the center core so that the two shafts could come up to each other. That, that center core is about 3 eighths of an inch thick. So that's the closest I could do this without having to cut the shafts. Ideally, I'd like to be able to leave that spider intact. So I'm going to do a second set of holes 3 eighths of an inch behind the first set of holes. So that way I've got both of those as possibilities when I want to bolt the motor in. The other problem is that if I really do need a lot more room, let me go ahead and put this on the rest of the way. Right now the coupler is going to sit at the very front of the motor like that, but you'll notice I've got a whole lot more shaft. I could run the coupler all, all the way back here, but I'd have to cut off part of the shaft. And that's doable. It's a hardened steel shaft, but an abrasive cutoff wheel or a cutoff saw will, sh will cut that down to whatever length I need. So I measured that, and I can lose up to two inches of motor shaft. So I'm also going to do a set of holes two inches in front of the ones I just marked. And that gives me the closest I can bring these two together and still be able to bolt it up. Now we've got the center line laid out. We've got the front two bolt holes set up. And we're going to go closer in by 2 inches and further back by 3 eighths of an inch and put in three sets of holes. I do have the blueprint for the motor, very handy but normally hard to get, which tells me the spacing of the mounting holes on the bottom of the motor. Now the motor actually has three sets of holes. And I'm going to use different pairs of those so I don't have to put holes too close to each other. So what I'm going to do now is take my square and start marking things out. The first thing I want to do is remark the center line in white so you can see it on the video. So this is back to my landscape square, my uh, sheetrock square, and marking the center line of the motor. Hopefully that should show up. And the first thing I want to do is run a line across where those bolt holes are. So this is the front bolt holes if I drill out the center of the divider. The next set of bolt holes are eight and a quarter inches behind these. So I'm going to go ahead and measure back from here. figure out the best way to do this. Eight and a quarter inches, and that's going to be where one row of holes is. There's also a row of holes, row of holes, roll of holes, at 10 inches. So I'm going to mark those as well. Now I want to take that whole system and remark it three-eighths of an inch back from where I started. So three-eighths there, Eight and a quarter plus three eighths and ten plus three eighths. That's if I put the spider in. And then I want to do a set of holes from the original two inches forward. This is if I have to chop the shaft off. So we'll have our front holes, eight and a quarter, and then ten. Now the other thing I know from my drawing is that the holes are 10 inches apart, 5 inches from the center line. So if I come out, let me start out running these lines across first of all. That line, that line. Those are the three places the mounting holes will go and what I have to do is measure 5 inches off from the center line and I'll have the actual positions. Now I have the six locations for the bolt holes that I'm going to need to be able to mount the motor so it lines up with the transmission shaft. 